just wanted to uh, introduce this evening's um, wonderful panel. Um, my name is Troy Casey, I'm a Camilleroy man from Northwest New South Wales um, and part of Blacklash Projects with Amanda Heyman over here. Um, before I kick into the formal proceedings, just want to acknowledge um, the traditional custodians of the land we're gathered on this evening, um, pay more respects to elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that <clears throat> we're at a university in a place of learning, teaching and sharing knowledge, and um, our communities have been doing that for tens of thousands of years, so um, it's fitting that we share some knowledge and some stories um, about a recent artist camp. Um, so we're hosting this panel discussion this evening at Griffith University, so thank you so much for being the hosts with the most. Um, this is a wonderful um, place to have a conversation as well, um, in Kegger Souza's exhibition. Um, it kind of talks to exchange, uh, learning, um, knowledge sharing, so it's a really fitting um, setting for this evening's chat. Uh, basically, Amanda and I, Black Lives Projects, um, curate Brisbane City Council's Indigenous Art Program, um, which is a program, citywide program that has multiple locations of light boxes, large murals, uh, animations onto the side of buildings in the CBD, sculptural works in the trains, and also projections onto the William Jolly Bridge. <coughs> uh, it's normally just for the month of May, but we've been fortunate enough to get an extension of that program through to the end of July. Um, and there's a couple of other exciting uh, four-wheeled um, activations that you might see in the next couple of weeks that we're really excited about as well. So uh, we thought about um, how can we extend the program with some really nice in-depth um, discussions about people's practice and exchange um, throughout Brisbane and kind of the regional areas um, with artists that we've worked with previously um, that are part of this year's program, Sonny's um, Circles of Life or in the Patrines on Edward Street. Um, and also um, Libby Harwood's been in our exhibitions previously um, and there's Lisi, like there's heaps of people that have um, previously been in there. So it's a really nice kind of platform for us to share stories and um, Amanda and I went over to the artist camp as industry uh, people um, to kind of see what these mob have created and um, it was a really inspiring day to see how happy um, and in the zone these artists were given some place and time and space to create so um, want to acknowledge the really hard work that Joanne Dresens has done for Gold Coast City Council in creating those spaces and creating opportunities for artists on the Gold Coast um, and creating opportunities for us to be able to then curate those artists into exhibitions and shows. So thank you, Joe. Um, I can speak way too much, so I'll stop and I'll hand it over to Joe, who's going to introduce the panellists, all of which I'm very familiar with and looking forward to hearing the discussions. Um, I'll just kick back over here and if there's any two bobs worth that I want to put in, I might just put my hand up. Um, but uh, you'll see some of the amazing stuff that these guys have been working on. Um, with an exhibition coming up in November. So, without any further ado, let's welcome the panel. Yeah. Um, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge all the traditional descendants who are connected to the Brisbane area and the greater region. Um, it's a very special place. I grew up on the west side of Brisbane, and I've always loved returning here because I've moved just over the border, and I'm not that far away, but I still try and stay in contact and. The arts is a wonderful medium for me to keep those connections. And it's so nice to see all the familiar faces here tonight. If anyone would like a, a seat, seat with a back on it, they can actually um, pull one out for you, just so you're not going to be um, in any pain during this talk. So I just want to thank all of your elders as well. So um, My name is Joanne Dreesens. I was adopted and raised by the amazing Dreesens family here in Brisbane. I also have found my traditional connections through my photography work, uh, predominantly through the State Library of Queensland and the Queensland Museum work. Um, my family are actually were placed on Baramba Mission, now formerly called um, Sherbet. I have traditional connections uh, around the Winton area, which means I'm a Kawa descendant. We've got an official native title claim through there at the moment, um, and I've got traditional connections also to the East Cape York area. 
I've had the pleasure of working in the arts for ooh, probably about 25 years now. Um, I've got some of my former colleagues here tonight, which is very, um, it makes me feel really warm in my heart to feel the whole journey has been uh, with people that I'm very familiar with and they're just as passionate, it's particularly Troy and Amanda, who, Amanda in particular, and we've had we've got Lisa here in the room, they actually attended the first artist camp in 2014 and now they are literally in the industry today making some huge waves. So watch, watch their spaces continue to grow. Um, before I begin, I also wanted to just highlight the background to the artist camp and how it's, um, I guess, evolved and how I've been had the absolute blessings of watching the whole journey grow. Um, I'm trying to balance out the imagery. So I wanted to actually throw this image in because I, I was speaking to Gordon in his studio when we first met and I wanted to acknowledge that the artist camp grew out of Judy Watson's idea many, many years ago before the arts and culture team even existed. And um, she basically noticed in the Art Design Award that used to happen on the coast, the Indigenous Art Design Award, the work wasn't progressing as much as it should be. And she suggested to the community team at the time to run a <coughs> what an artist can, and they actually didn't know what that meant. They put it in the too hard basket. And then many years after that, the arts and culture team evolved around 2013, and the cultural strategy that we still have today is, I guess, the pivotal moment where the new team came in. Um, the current CEO of Hotel used to be my boss, and at the time we were sitting literally at a coffee table with Judy during the Saltwater Country and Judy mentioned it again, and she said, like, how about you do an, um, an artist camp? And it was, it was a no-brainer for me because I love, one, being able to take um, any art practice, whether it's photography, into the natural environment, being in the country. But luckily at the time, um, everyone involved or sitting at the table just said, of course, let's do it. And they allocated this, this amazing bucket of funds. And each year they keep telling me to make it bigger and bigger. So I think we're very lucky that we've had up to 42 participants go through. I've just been currently doing an evaluation on it. And they actually want to see how, how much bigger it can get. However, um, we are hoping to pull all the artists in, and while I have most of them in the room today, that we'd like to do a, a huge gathering around that and get your thoughts. because. While the artist camp has full agency, I'd like to maintain that your voices still remain in that space. So again, we're going to keep talking and any ideas that we have is not, um, not a bad one because I think you're all awesome. So with this image, um, five years on, we're still walking up that same, that same sand hill today, going to an amazing place. And before I go any, any further, I just wanted to actually also introduce that we have Gordon Hookie on my left, um, Anisonia Carmichael and Will Probert. Now, I can actually read out your bios, but would you like to say a few words and get warmed up into the session? Would you like to do that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you can start yes. anyway, but I, I, I would actually prefer if you had your voices in it, just like the cab. So, and that's how we've, we've always done it. So, over to you, Gordon. Uh, yeah, my name's Gordon Hookie. Um, from one year from North Queensland, they're my people. And uh, yeah, I've been based in Brisbane now for, um, gee, I forgot how old my son is. Yeah, uh, about 10 years, given that he's eight. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a soft mic. Oh, you do? Ah, yeah. Um, well, that's who I am. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> you are everybody in our Kwanamika Janda language. Is hello, hello, and now I'm on the air. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Sonia, Sonia Carmichael, a Kwanamika woman from Njiraba, Morgampan. North Stradbroke Island and Morton Island, and we share beautiful saltwater country of the whole area, you know, to the mouth of the Brisbane River and down to the, the kangaroo lays down around the 
urban areas, so it takes in a great big area. And um, yeah, so we'll talk more, but thanks. Hello. Hello. There we go. Hello, uh, my name's Will. I'm Miradri. Uh, I was born in Blackdown in Western Sydney, so I'm a Koori boy. Uh, but I grew up on the Gold Coast for about 10 years. I've been living here in Brisbane for the last two years. Um, I'm a practicing artist, so I do music, photo, video, painting, and well, I'm kind of learning how to paint, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's me. Thank you. Um, I think it was a really nice vibe this year because we had some young people come through like Will and I was excited when I saw Will's application. So for those who don't understand how the camp works, we, it is an application process. It is strictly for Gold Coast residents. However, given the way I've worked in state government, I, was, I felt very constrained working in local government boundaries and understand too that it's important that we can collaborate so I started forming partnerships with Redmond Council. This year, thanks to Brisbane City Council, we were able to bring Will on. We also um, talked about uh, Sonia's involvement. And so we've always had an artist from, I guess, the north end of Minjarabo, I'm gonna call it. Because for those who also don't know, South Stradbroke is, is, is split away from the North Stradbroke area. So it's interesting how many people don't understand that dynamic as well. Before I even did the camp, I, I've never even been to South Stradbroke. I've always been to North Stradbroke, end of it. However, we're really also aware of the political strategies around being that inclusive as well, um, for lots of reasons around that. So I felt really excited as well that not only is Honey Sonia able to participate in the camp, that we've got like a generational response as well. So with Lisi being previously, we've also had Frey come as an industry person as well, and Simon. The only person missing was Denny. Denny so. And then, so each year I also choose um, a lead teacher, artist, mentor, whatever you want to call them. And so I uh, I think, I'm not sure, Gordy, whether I just ran you out of the blue, because I, I, I have never worked with you. However, each year I'm always looking for someone different to push the boundaries. And so part of the process on the camp is for artists to learn new skills and to um, literally try new <coughs> mediums, basically, and not just fall back into their comfort zone. I'm not sure. Any of the artists here, feel free to jump in whenever you want, but I wanted to also hand it over to Gordy to just explain your thought process, because we talked about this not long ago, how you were thinking you were going to actually deliver your workshops and stuff, and. We were actually debating whether you were a lecturer or a teacher as well. So did you want to? Uh, is this working? Uh, and now is it working? Uh -huh. Oh look, uh, okay, I'll just talk anyway. Uh, talk you directly. can hear me, yeah? Good. Talk directly. Uh, like yeah. that? No, no, it's not. Just make it clear. Uh, testing. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. It's working, yeah. yeah. It's a technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, um, yeah, Joe asked me to get involved, and of course, you know, I, I realised that uh, Judy, who's in the studio next door to me, she was involved in uh, a number of them uh, of the camps as well. But um, yeah, when when Joe asked me, you know, like uh, you know, some of the ideas that that, that I had um, was specifically related to you know, my practice and how I, I work. So um, when Joe mentioned to me, you know, like the, the main thing is to try and get the participants you know, outside their comfort zone, because you mentioned you know, from uh, when it initially started, how the artwork that was being produced was uh, you know, mainly the same, or, or they were trying, or, or the, uh, everyone was trying to uh, make art you know, a tradition traditionally oriented way, um, you know, with dots or, or, or uh, cross-hatching and things like that. And uh, I, I think Judy saw that and just wanted, uh, you know, some more development from what's, what's been done, rather than just look at, you know, tradition, but we have to look at ourselves, um, you know, in the light of today, the reality of, uh, of living now, because basically, you know, when people talk about culture a lot of times, 
you know, especially black fellas, we just think about it as just being, you know, traditional way, but when you think about it, culture is actually dynamic. Uh, we're actually living it, you know. I mean, 20 from years from now, when, uh, you know, the world looks at what we have done, like right now is part of our dreaming, uh, or part of that whole creation or, or, or cosmos that belongs to us. But when Joe mentioned, you know, well, you know, get them out of their comfort zone, you know, the only way that I can do it basically uh, is with uh, technique or, or, or getting them to do something that they have not done before. Um, try and make them uncomfortable, all the participants. I was thinking, uh, maybe I should hide all the insect repellent and get them to do something near the <laughs> mangroves. <laughs> That would be really uncomfortable. You know, with all the midges there as well. But uh, oh, look, most black fellows haven't done any oil painting, so you know. So I, I, I took all my paints, all the mediums, and I mean it's a complex kind of thing to do because uh, it's just so process oriented. Um, and the other thing that I was trying to do is uh, uh, I was recently um, inspired. The 6th of January last year, um, I went to the post office uh, because that's the spot where Dunderley was executed. Um, so Blackfellas, we gather there 6th of January every year just to talk about our heroes of resistance and, and, and Dunderley and, uh, and basically celebrate um, our lives, you know. But, you know, uh, 20 days after that, we've got Invasion Day March, and a week out from that, um, the Warriors, they ran a, a banner-making exhibition, uh, banner-making workshop, sorry, yeah. Uh, well, it was actually banner, it was more placards, because, uh, you know, banners take a long time to make. So I decided to do a placard-making workshop too, as part of my, my program there. And another thing I wanted to do, was uh, play with wax, do a bit of um, wax and caustic, which can be a lot of fun. And uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough power or electricity um, to be able to do that. But, uh, but you know, people are aware of uh, yeah, the, the technique and what to do. So we want it. So you know, like it's something that can continue on. But you know, for me, um, I went there with the intention, basically, of learning more from everyone than what they would learn from me. And uh, I think I came, away, came out from that quite successful because I stole a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Um, just in terms of committing um, to the camp, I was gonna ask Sonia and Will to comment why they applied in and was it to do with the lead artist, or was it to do with the environment, or you know what what triggered your application process? Um, Sonia, do you want to? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't know that Gordy was going to put us at right out of that comfort zone, but to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an amazing experience, the camp, and I think. Why did you say, Joe? Did we think yeah, about I mean, why? In in the end, I saw you making a really cool back up. And you, you were going to use it yeah. or something. Yeah, so why did I apply? I think, as you mentioned before, just seeing the powerful waves of energy that have come out of that beautiful camp that are in the room here now, some of them, and family, and Mandy, and Lisi, and knowing Libby, this, this has been on the camp, and our group this year, the collective energy that we all bring together through sharing that experience was um, great, so, and, and an honour to be part of it. Well, what about your work? Which one? The sign that you made. Oh, this one wired me for with language. <laughs> Gordon, um, yeah, got us thinking very fast about the power of language and how one word, just one word can ignite a thousand images. <laughs> so that one word split me in two in seconds was spirituality, is it there, Joey? And uh, that relates to a whole... Um, yeah, whole, whole other story, I guess, around our history and our almost annihilation of our cultural practices. So there was a whole heap of things. I have got another image that has pushed you out of your boundaries. Check this out. 
The one that pushed me out of my bed was starting the session with a snake bite kick. So, um, just on that, um, Will, did you want to comment? <laughs> Before I get carried away. There are so many stories. What's, what happens at camp stays on camp. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Will. Yes. Just comment on my choir playing and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, I had a close friend who still lived down the Gold Coast where I used to live with. They actually, um, they sent it over to me. They are like, oh, you should apply for this. It looks right up your alley. I'm like, okay, no worries. So, I went in and checked it out and kind of was blown away. I was like, what? This exists? Like, because in my experience thus far in life, things like that don't exist. Like, you can't go away for a week and practice art with your community, you know, and be taught by, you know, some of the, like, in high school I used to do papers on, like, Robin Howe and Gordon and Bridget and Joan, so it was a bit, you know, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, even crazier when I got a phone call from Joe three months later, like, oh, yeah, you can come along. Um, but, yeah, I guess what drew me to go was just getting to be in that space. I think that space is vital to inspiring new thought and creating new work that you may never come across otherwise. Um, I mean, when I'm working from home, often, you know, a lot of the ideas that I generate are either from my personal perception as I walk through the world or my internal dialogue or whatever it may be. Um, but when you're in a space like that, you're, for, you know, you're forced into a position where you're having conversations with other people yeah, it was also a very nurturing and supportive space and everything that I was kind of hoping for. So yeah, I guess that's why I went. Okay, thank you. What I also want to um, acknowledge is this year we, we stepped it up a bit and we asked to have a mentor process. So we've got Libby in the room and Alicia Jones was the other mentor. And the reason was that we've had a few um, return to the camp a few times. So we, in my team, they, they discussed about uh, the secular su support that we normally give in the council area is the budget is aligned to help people, you know, in that sort of process. So we put that out, and um, I think Olivia and Alicia, I don't know if you want to agree, uh, Gordy, that they did an incredible job. Just, and we should have done it every year, but again, we have to evolve to learn these things. Um, and that, that knowledge of, I guess, the place, what's needed, it's like, a, it's almost like a 24 7 environment so I don't know if you want to comment on that Gordy or in terms of your workshop because you had three key workshops the visual art diary making with kind of so this on a lap tonight the placard uh, protest of the banners and oil the one painting. that you couldn't do because oil of the and then the wax and caustic but uh, yeah I mean Libby and, and, and Elise uh, was just uh, invaluable as far as organizing you know the materials and, and just helping uh, with the little technical elements like priming or, or putting out colours or, 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 or just sort of uh, basic tidying up. Uh, um, just those little things that, that need to be done, they were, they were well and truly on the job. But also I think um, in, uh, in, in rallying everyone and being, you know, the, the, the go between, you know, like the uh, instructors, so to speak, and all the, all the participants because you know, they were participants at one stage as well. So it's it's good to have someone who knows, you know, like the culture of the camp or, or the dynamic of the camp because, you know, I went there, you know, just totally relaxed and I didn't want to impose anything on anyone basically or be, author you know, authoritarian. And I hadn't been because of you know, of the mentors that was there because of uh, uh, Olivia and uh, Elise, they just sort of organised everyone to the workshops and uh, ensured that things were done or just engaged all throughout. So, you know, like I, I think having them there, you know, this year and, you know, possibly next year, the year after, having someone like them there so that it, they're like the. Uh, the oil or the, the grease within the machine, you know, to to make it. How's that for a metaphor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to make it, yeah, 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 flow. So, yeah, and, and 
not only that, you know, they, they're funny as well. So, they, you know, they, they uh, uh, just have, you know, can have a good laugh, I suppose, and you not take it seriously. And, uh, you know, that was one of the major things in the camp is that there was quite a lot of uh, laughter. And uh, I think the dynamics, you know, with the, the personalities of all the participants uh, uh, as well, um, it was sort of uh, very, very, uh, you know, cohesive, I, I guess, where, is that, is that the right word? Yeah, 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 to, for it to be really good. So just rolling into that, um, that space, and I know that when we talked about this talk, is it was to talk about, you know, the sacred space as well. So is this, there's something about that island or that place, it's very isolated, so I'm really conscious of the dynamics on, in that, it's like Survivor on the TV show, it's, but it's way, it's way better. However, I am conscious of the different dynamics in the age groups and the personalities and the cultural sort of side of it that comes along with that as well. The people who cook the food, they don't stay with us as well. Um, so I, I, mean, so I was going to ask you, um, in, and yourself Will too, in terms of the island and the connection to the island, did you find the same kind of connection there even though you hadn't physically been there into that particular spot before that I'm aware of? Did you, um, yeah, I think um, you know, living on saltwater country and being on Minjuba and you know, those oceans of heart that were once joined, feeling that um, connection was still there and a beautiful place with the middens, you know, we have middens on country and that just extended to that area of being there and felt, um, I guess, still felt that presence in the absence, you know, and um, to see the middens and the rich, you know, materials still, you know, uh, we didn't really, we were thinking about why, what would this place have been, you know, where the middens are, you know, there's so many gatherings here for some um, special spiritual, you know, it's had about it, yeah, that it still exists today and not knowing why or what the, yeah, meeting place was about, you know, so some, yeah, some absence is still, you know, in, in knowledge, but that fantastic feeling of in the present there, yeah. And those footsteps, yeah, still there. Mm. Thank you. And what about Will? So you also grew up on the coast, so that was another trigger for me to bring you to back home. Yeah, yeah. I I grew up on the Gold Coast from for quite a while. I can't really put it to numbers at, off the top of my head. I think it was like <coughs> eight to ten years. So pretty much my formative years from primary school up into middle high school. Um, so going back there, uh, especially in the context of you know being with community and creating art together and having conversations and just sharing space with one another um, was what I think of it. I'll just go with great. It was really great. Um, it was very familiar, like incredibly so. Um, it reminded me a lot because I mean, growing up, I spent a lot of time like in the beaches or around the forest in the different national parks all up and down the Gold Coast. I was a skater kid, so I was always out and about exploring. Um, so yeah, immediately for me, it was very familiar being there. And I also think um, the energy we all brought as individuals as well really complemented that space. Um, I don't think it would have been quite the same. I don't know, it's actually confusing to kind of understand the equation of whether country was creating that for us or we were creating that in that space but it was very unique and special um yeah yeah i i totally agree what about you Gordy? did you feel anything like in terms of saltwater fresh water we, we talk about that a lot well well for me because you know uh my country is in the sticks basically uh you know to be in that environment you know uh, uh it was very special you know for me um, I slept well for one every night when I, I went to sleep straight away <laughs> and uh, got up, had a solid sleep. So I got up. So I mean, I mean to me that that speaks volumes. Uh, I was at ease, at rest. Uh, um, uh, I guess my days were taking up as well, sort of thing. 
and uh, you know just the uh, I guess the dynamic of the group would have uh, you know plays a lot in also you know the the special feeling that that I had in being there, but also like the, uh, you know especially with you know the the, the participants, uh, the instructors, the the mentors. Uh, um, it, it, it's just like a jigsaw puzzle the way everyone fit together. Um, I mean, Laurie was always talking and yarning and, and laughing. Uh, 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 Hag uh, and uh, uh, his wife, they provided the most beautiful meals the whole time. Uh, I mean, Rick uh, uh, with his workshop, which I learned a hell of a lot from myself, not only in what he was teaching, but also the way that he delivered it. That was quite uh, uh, wonderful as, as well. You know, So just learning everything uh, from everyone and the way that they engage just sort of uh, made it happen so that, um, you know, what is produced uh, uh, is evidence to, you know, the, the dynamic. Like, I can remember uh, the day before and the day of uh, everyone coming over during the industries day, you know, uh, it's like I was just in my space and uh, just doing my stuff. But, it's like people was running around everywhere, and then when I did get a chance, just before the boat come, to see what was going on, what was happening, you know, uh, there was all this art that was made, you know, uh, you know within, um, you know, within the in situ uh, uh, place there and that, and yeah, things put everywhere, and uh, you know, here I was sort of in my own little world, in my own little workshop space, and uh, and all this was going on, and uh, it was almost like going to, uh, you know, um, see a spectacle or, or an opening sort of thing. So that was quite fantastic to see as well. Thank you. Um, so to top it up, we, we had not only the mentors this year, we had, I've added, you said there's Gordon, Laurie, so I don't know what I'm counting. <laughs> there's four teachers. We normally have one teacher. <laughs> um, because it's such a huge project and I'm still absorbing it. Like I'm was going through the images today and was going, oh, there's time, there's moments and the, um, the special relationships we all now have with each other. And, um, but everyone like Gordy and then Laurie, I think I just showed you some of the sculpture work that happened. So for me, trying to explain to people who haven't been there before, Laurie really wanted to do his sculpture. And I said, Laurie, you do realise it's on a little island. So we had, I had, luckily I'm in council, I had to find a cement mixer <laughs> and leads. I had to find the boat to get it over there. We had to bring the cement powder, I think two weeks before on the barge. And it just went on and on and on. So, you know, I just rolled with it because <laughs> that's kind of what I do. Um, so the other question I had too around the, I guess the space and whether it's the country or the dynamic of the people is, if either of you have been to other residencies that have an equivalent value or feeling, and I know Gordy spoke about the international residency, um, I wasn't sure about Will, and I know Annie Sonia's been to out to is it yeah, where exactly, Sydney or yeah, Central exactly. Australia. Yeah, was that art focused? Well, it was a or very lived experience. You know, in the community, we went very remote. It, uh, but it was an intensive field study as part of. Um, University of Queensland's art history students, so we were very, um, yeah, it was amazing going across 10 days, you know, visiting um, all of the remote art centres and spending five days living in community and practising and meeting and yarning and walking on country and women's business and going out and collecting and creating, you know, it was just an incredible time, yeah taking time out and living that lived experience, you know, for a short time, which will stay, with, I guess, with me for a long time, yeah, yeah. And what about you, Will? Do you, have you done anything equivalent? Um, I was, I'm just racking my brain to think about it, because actually, I've been in a lot of circumstances where I'm sharing space with a lot of people, um, a lot of love we're doing different kinds of work, not necessarily arts work. Um, a lot of times it's either been activist spaces, predominantly activist spaces, um, or kind of like workshop spaces and stuff like that, where we're doing workshops for some of the NGOs I did some work for. 
um, when I was doing work for like Seed Indigenous Youth Climate Network. Um, and in a lot of ways, there's similarities. I think my brain, I want to talk on the similarities, but my brain is just showing out the stark contrast, which is that us going on site to a special place, I think, made it particularly different because of the disconnect we had <coughs> from the things. I don't know if I keep talking in and out of this. I'm sorry about that, by the way. I'm sure that's really annoying. Um, yeah, being on the island, separated from the rest of the world, just having us in that environment, on country, with a clear focus to like share, grow, develop, um, specifically around arts, um, I think was very special. Um, and like, it's, it's hard to equivalent because it was very unique. Like as I said initially, it's, it was a very unique experience to have shared. Um, it's actually strange because usually in circumstances like that, for instance, if I've been at a big event, say in Canberra, and we're all meeting to speak about climate protecting country um, around activism, you know, you might have more um, high tension or different kind of energy being thrown around and uh, less compromise on you and value maybe. Um, none of that stuff existed when we were there, which is really stand out, because it can so easily come up. Um, everyone was just so open to share and receive, and yeah, that was very great, special, unique, and other positive words. <laughs> so, the beauty of this, this talk is that I'm trying to get quotes of them, because we're rolling into the exhibition phase and the book phase. I'm real and gammon with quotes, eh? Hey? <laughs> Um, Gordon, can I just get your comment on your international residency comparison because that's an amazing too, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. what is really interesting is that uh, I've been involved in uh, probably three uh, residencies that are similar uh, to um, you know, the, the, the South Manjarraba, um, what, 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 what I've just been through with uh, there. Uh, I was involved in um, uh, Chibai, uh, cultural centre uh, residency where artists come from mainly all the, the Pacific Islands, um, all different Pacific Islands and engaged, lived and interacted together. Uh, I was involved in two triangle workshops. Uh, one was in um, Burragarang National Park which is in between Canberra and Sydney and artists, uh, international, uh, lots of artists from you know uh, the, the States, uh, Europe, uh, um, Asia, um, Indonesia, um, Asia, uh, Africa, that, you know, there's quite a lot of international artists that were there in that one. But also the same with the other one that I was involved in uh, um, uh, at Dingo Flats, which is south of, uh, of Perth. Um, and there was artists from all around the world there as well. And uh, it was about being like in an environment away from civilization, so to speak. Um, and uh, just getting in the bush in the environment and uh, engaging with the space, you know, within that. And um, I can see very much uh, that, um, you know, the camp that we were on um, was very similar. Uh, but one thing that was in common with those, whole, with those three international uh, residency triangle workshop camp that I've been on, Judy Watson was there. No. at every camp. So I can see, you know, uh, her concepts yeah, and ideas sense. kind of unfolding uh, there uh, as well. So, you know, like, it, it, it's very, there's, there's like a, a similarity uh, or a thread that had gone through the four, like, uh, residencies that I've been on, um, you know, the engagement of all the participants, the space, uh, I mean, one of the, the wonderful things that, you know, while I was stuck in my little space doing my stuff, I could see the artist, you know, meandering through the bush collecting materials or, or doing things there, you know, it was quite uh, very much like the other residencies that I've been on. Okay, great. <laughs> um, the other little surprise I wanted to just share with you was um, I have one of Dominic's friends here. So we had our first international um, <coughs> artists attend the camp this year. So I met um, a group of 
the Canadian crew at Mwilumba, where I live, out by accident. Um, and obviously Dominique is Metis, First Nation, but she's also French speaking. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to share my appreciation for you being here today because we're hoping that she'll come back out for the exhibition. So the exhibition will be in December 7th and we've just been allocated a space hub for five months to create whatever we want for that. So I'm gonna step it up again and I'm, I will probably try and get you back, Gordy and Laurie Hall and Rick. Rick actually lives on the Gold Coast, so we're actually claiming him outright. Yes. <laughs> um, so he can't hide. Yeah. So the other little uh, surprise I wanted to share was this. So when Rick, when you book Rick, he comes all um, prepared with this full wheelbarrow of artifacts and um, really we yeah, sorry, we wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. No, we needed a wheelbarrow to cut the rest of it. Um, he he asked me, he said, Oh, can I can I get some corrugated uh, corrugated iron? And I said, If you can find it, you can can you just get it over there and, or put it on the bag or something? It was like another thing in my list. So he did that, he said, Oh, I found some in my in my storage shed. I said, Great. Let's get it on the bag. And I need it there, blah 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 blah. So he did that and he, he's actually made a traditional canoe out of this amazing material. <coughs> he was cut, like, all of his hands, I don't know if you saw it, but there was this blood. Every time I'd see him, I'm like, wet. <laughs> Please say kid, just, just keep it with you. When I go away, <laughs> yeah, just like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. So he's incredible to have, and the reason I wanted all of them was, there's a couple of reasons. Obviously, yourself, Laurie and Rick are all like the old school that been through university and studied, but they still got the, traditional sort of knowledge is back from whatever, however you want to make that term, but it was a traditional contemporary balance. So we had Rick with his little camp over on the side where we saw everyone sitting down. And then we had your space, um, and then we had Laurie doing sculptures, um, which are now permanent there, which is pretty incredible. Um, and then we had the, um, we had the, uh, Bianca come over for a couple of days, purely for the academic discussion and the pathways, because um, even though I'm from Brisbane, and that everything's sort of here on your doorstep, all the amazing opportunities. On the Gold Coast, it's quite isolated, and I've noticed, or I've had to work really hard for about four years straight to try and get up to the same kind of level. And we've still got a long way to go, so we're really, really grateful that we could nab you, because I know you travel overseas as well, and get you out on that, to that island um, via the bigger boat. So, um, even though Amanda and Lacey had came to the first camp, on that first camp there was no pontoon and there was no such thing as a bigger boat. We had little tiny water taxis and multiple trips and everything had to get transported across. Um, so, yeah, I, they told me to lash out so I did. I found a bigger boat, bigger crew, it was a pirate crew. Um, and we wanted to also teach them a little bit about culture and respect in place as well. So um, with this canoe, I, I wanted to go into that discussion now in terms of the space and holding in place, is the industry day. So everyone who was there knows where this is, how important this day was, or well, I thought it was. We've also had Amanda and Troy obviously come on that day. You were on that boat. I yeah. know. <laughs> and Jasper and Lisi. Anybody else? Who else was? I'd like to get you next, Angela on the next industry day. And you, we couldn't get to you or down Sydney. Anyway, I want to hand it over to you guys because in terms of the shared space and discussion, we actually had to work very hard late at night after Stephanie spoke about copyright, or just before she spoke, about how we were going to deal with these 42 industry guests coming over in the middle of everything that was happening and you've only had three days to make work and you were like, why are all these people coming? So. I handed over to, because I wasn't sure whether you were actually on board or not, but I know you wanted to just keep making art, and that's fine. So <laughs> yeah. you had your space, so you were happy, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the wonderful thing is that uh, it's almost uh, Genesis or the seed was planted on the first day there, and of all people, I, I felt uh, uh, Dominique uh, just in discussion. Uh, I know. When we're talking about asylum seekers or something, and we're talking about the uh, the yacht club or the 
next door and you know the, all the signs that were up there you know keep out uh, at time you know morning and uh, all that there's just tre tremendous amount of signs keeping people out of um, you know this rich people clubhouse basically <laughs> so yeah 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 you know you're not welcome basically you know and uh, then you've got our little space there which is uh, you know uh, a, a camp basically and uh, I, I think uh, Dominique mentioned on that first night you know um, both people welcome you know <laughs> so yeah so we done that sign, <coughs> and I think from there um, I, I, yeah, I was on board from there basically because you know yeah, it was her concepts and ideas I didn't even hear that discussion and all of a sudden you were painting it that night and well and I just yeah. like, and then, we, and then we stuck it out on the sand the next day yeah. for when people come off the boat. Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll let you continue. Sorry. Yeah, uh, well the scenario just unfolded there, you know, where, um, you know, uh, where we're basically contradicting, you know, contradicting our government, you know, who are, who are basically um, uh, are violating human rights by, by not um, given sanctuary to people that are in need. So, you know, so, you know, uh, what we had there was kind of like a microcosm of the, the, the greater thing that was happening. And, uh, and it was next to, you know, this exclusive club that wants to keep people out. So, so the contradiction was quite, uh, uh, quite prominent. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I just think everyone came with their ideas that intermingled with, uh, with that whole day, you know, of uh, us being a, a sovereign nation there and, and uh, people having to have passports uh, in order to come on the island. So, you know, so it was quite a, a powerful enactment, I think. And I mean, there's quite a lot of discussion that happened and quite a lot of complexities. And um, Laurie and Rick, we kept on saying, kiss. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Oh. <laughs> because, you know, like, when groups are discussing things uh, about what to do on a day like that, it gets quite complicated. Yeah. Uh, and the best thing is to <laughs> keep it simple, yeah. <laughs> so, did anyone else want to comment on Yeah, and I think that's where Libby's leadership came in as well, having our deadly mentors on board to put it all together. We had a, uh, a lengthy discussion the night before, and it came together beautifully, hey? Yeah. Maybe, maybe Libby should just yeah. tell of the day and what, what actually happened, yeah. Um, well, I yeah, was just going to say, you got to get out there before you bring it back in. And yeah. that's the really uncomfortable thing. Yeah. part where you're like, is everyone going to like come with me? Like, yeah. 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 They're saying a really short time frame mm. and people doing performance art have never done it before. And um, it was really cool actually that night. It, mm. Something helped us <laughs> when we did it. So we had this idea brewing all week. A couple of people had the idea and then they talked to someone else. Can everyone hear me or do I need the mic? Yeah, yeah but they talked to someone else and then had um, you know a conversation over here and there and then um, we started writing down ideas and some were what way beyond anything I would ever want to do but you know that was okay <laughs> and then um, when we come to the night before the night before we planned it yeah, oh. <laughs> um, we just pretty much said Yep, we can do that. Um, that's a good idea. Let's do that next time. Um, you know, and just got it really down. And what we did, what we, because we had some, it's, I mean, we're dealing with people and politics and entry onto place. So, you know, when you're dealing with that sort of stuff, you need a lot of time to actually do that properly. So we had to really just bring it down to what would work. And then in the end, I think we had the canoe. So we didn't want people to just come onto the island without stopping and waiting. 
So we were, we were dealing with that protocol of just stop, wait, and then wait for an invitation. So we had fires, three fires, and I don't think that went to plan, but that was fine. <laughs> the fire got lit, and then Alicia and Rick um, went out in the canoe, which was practically sinking, you can see that. <laughs> And um, they had a bag that Joe happened to have, which was a ration bag. And then the, everybody on the boat had to look for something that they were going to give as a some sort of an offering. So I, I actually call it on, there was offshore processing happening. So yeah. Literally, because we, we, we wanted them to just consider that. Yeah. And then, we, and then we took them through the onshore processing, which Will and Sonia were involved with so mm. and Lystra with your special words oh yeah, yeah that's right and then out of the blue in the morning a poem came which was perfect oh so um Tori just reminded me too with the first people first signage we also placed that on the other side of the walkway coming off the boat <laughs> That's when they came back. Okay, so this is the onshore processing. Um, Lystra's just here reading. But what actually happened, and I think Jasper and Lisi might remember this too, because we had the first people first signing, we, we were just laughing, saying, oh, you know, we should let the, all the black fellas go first. And then actually it did happen naturally. Everyone who was non-Indigenous waited, and everyone who, yeah, was supposed to come first went through first. And I noticed they're all in the lineup first here. So the next one, um, I'll let, I don't know if Lisha wants to comment on her participation in this, but then we had Sonia and um, Will here with your glasses. Yeah. We had a bit of ochre offering and the blessing and because everyone had their own little ideas. So that was the inclusive part. And I remember smoking as well? the smoking was on yeah, the beach. Yeah, um, the yeah. yeah, did you want to comment, Will? Because yeah, I know yeah. you just went and got your little yeah. diary. Oh, I grabbed this diary just to, um, just to add a bit of emphasis to like how complex it was to try and plan that day. So like these are this is my planning as we were having the discussion. But yeah, it ended up being fantastic. As Gordon was saying before, um, the entire space transformed like night and day within the space of a few hours from that morning um, when Colin and uh, Mark. Mark, I can't believe I forgot that. Colin and Mark set up the border ring and painted it all with ochre just past where we were doing the processing here. Um, and you can see those fashionable shades I'm wearing. They were actually created with iron fence wire. Fence wire. So Rick made those for me. Um, and then Colin and Mark gave me some markings. Um, and then for anyone that wanted to come onto the island, we had to give them, it was kind of like their passport, placing the ochre on their hands. Um, because while we were there, I guess, we were holding it as a sovereign space, saying that you're invited to come on in. Um, yeah, and I mean, I feel like it was a really good process. It's very humbling, that's for sure, especially for the participants on the other side, I'm sure. Because I, I could just, no, you can't come in, I get it. <laughs> yeah, and I remember when Lystra, um she ran down to the beach early that morning when we were trying to work out what was going on. And she was like, oh, I've just written this poem this morning. Do you want to hear it? And then I was bawling my eyes out because I was so tired. And I said, can you please read that out for the boat people, <laughs> basically. And she did that. She did an incredible job. And we're actually going to publish that in the book. So um, just so you know, the, the other books are here. And that's one of the major outcomes that we also do is making sure everyone gets published and there's an ISBN number and it gets deposited and they get marketed and archived and 
Reverend Day. Yeah, um, yeah um, for me, uh, those publications was uh, an incredible resource because, you know, I've not uh, been, you know, on, on that camp before or, or uh, but just to see what the other artists have done in the past and just the whole uh, uh, attitude and feeling um, which resides in those books was uh, able to, you know, prepare me mentally because, you know, basically, you know, I said from the start, I'm not a teacher um, or an instructor, you know, um, I'm an artist that occasionally do um, lectures at the art college here, but I've never been able to um, impart learning in that sort of scenario. So just sort of seeing what, uh, you know, the previous uh, mentors, instructors, teachers have done and then, then uh, you know, within those uh, publications. So yeah, I, I think it's invaluable. So just for anyone who doesn't know, we've had um, Judy Watson, Brian Robinson, Fiona Foley, now we've had Gordon Hooke, Laurie Nelson, Rick Rosa, Bianca Beetson, and hopefully one day those artists and mentors will be returning as teachers. That's obviously our, our ultimate aim. Was there any other closing comments? Because I've only got one more slide that I'm going to wait for the end because I just wanted to show the audience a little lovely so I like surprises. <laughs> um, Sonia Will, did you want to... I'm just conscious of time too. Uh, just quickly, thank you, Joe, for the you know putting it all together. And I think you know I was thinking about reflecting on what we actually got out of that camp, and it was that whole, as I mentioned earlier, the collective energy that we all bring to the space. But it also pushed us out of our comfort, not not comfort zone, but <laughs> pushed the boundaries, I guess, using you know, amazing uh, resources here. You know, our, our, te our mentors, our teachers, not teachers, sorry, artists, and. Um, the whole group together and coming together with um, natural, you know, I'm a weaver, so quantum, you know, we have beautiful abundance of fibre on country, but there was also so much, you know, beautiful Talwalpan, which is a cotton tree, ochres, ropes, ghost nets washed up from the, and I was walking, I just wanted to keep walking back to Minjiraba, and it was not so far away, but something in between, but anyway, still to be able to find stuff washed up, you know, the same stuff, I guess that's a similarity, hey, a big one. Yeah, that, that stuff that impacts on our marine life is, you know, severely impacts and is beautiful to weave with and comes in amazing, yeah, colours as is sea washed, you know, ocean sprayed and, but yeah, it sadly impacts on our marine life and it's also the same thing, seeing, caring for country and how healing that is, being on country there was amazing, yeah, so thank you for that. Thank you. And Will, did you want any last comments? Uh, I just got mic shot, sorry. Just hit, hit me like a bat. But yeah, I wanted to thank you as well. Um, I know that you uh, jumped a lot of hoops to be able to help me attend, so I just wanted to thank you for that also. Yeah, so just um, thank you for that. I just wanted to also just list all the other artists that came this year. So obviously, Well came through Brisbane City Council support. Um, we had Sylvia and Mikachi come from Logan independently. Um, we also have, and certainly come from, even though you sit in Redden uh, Council area, we know that we always include quantum maker artists. Uh, we've had Lester Bishop, who's here in the room today, Rhonda Sharp, Alara Cameron, uh, Mark Cora, Claire Freeman, Rebecca Ray, and then Dominic from Canada, who hopefully will come back out. So, yeah, thank you. And just in the closing slide, Gordy, I wanted to just highlight how awesome you are. Because everyone got to do a body work. <laughs> and, I, and, I think that is such a really nice gift to be able to give your signature work away like that, yeah. even though you were nervous about the workshop. <laughs> but we, I just know, because you kept saying, I'm not a teacher. I was like, yes, you are. Yes, you got lots to impart. And so, yeah, thank you yeah. very much. Which one of those lives in our office now, too? You want to tell that story? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. not, not the beer, just the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, I think we should stop there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think. Yeah, let you have the last one. Okay? No, no, no. I'll just wait. <laughs> any questions? Has anyone got any ideas, maybe, or questions? Or, um... Can we go along? <laughs> I have had that asked. Yeah. Um, I would have just stayed on. Like it was still with me for weeks and weeks. Up. It is really hard to pack up and yeah. leave. It's the hardest bit. Yeah. One, the energy, but two, just the soul. It was like, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
tell you what, uh, we left in a hurry. Yeah, 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 because of the tide. Oh, oh, the yeah, tide waits tide. for no one. Yeah, yes, the bigger boat, yes, good idea, Mark. Yeah. Yes, not quite deep enough for us. But then I'm going to work on that strategy. Year? Is that yeah. happening next year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Um, Actually, the tide was all right before Laurie and I got on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Is there any other comments? Um, I guess, like, after going through this experience, um, oh, can you hear me? Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'm just wondering, I guess, like, as part of the, I guess, results, of the camp, were there any ways in which your practice or the way that you would sort of like formalize or conceptualize your work, did that change while you were in the space? And also is there anything that you Excellent could, like, question. take out from that in like subsequent works after that experience? If, if I think any of you or even yeah. in the room? Um, I can say definitely, like 100%. Um, it even, in, it impacted it in the, a lot of different ways, uh, from a technique way, definitely. Um, conceptually, I've been brewing a few ideas I've wanted to kind of put forward and being in that space definitely helps cement those ideas and also bring, I uh, can't really put it to words, not great with words, unless I write them. Um, but yeah, no, definitely um, had an impact on the value I placed in my work. Um, my voice, you know, coming, speaking about my identity, my community, the things that I want to speak upon. Yeah. Uh, growing up, not widely regarded as having value. So when you're in a space where your voice is valued and you get to create art and it be valued, super impactful. Um, I came home and straight away and I started working with the medium that the not teacher taught me. <laughs> um, after Gordon taught me, the skills with the oil painting, it became the main thing I was working on when I got home. And I'm not that great, but I've been steadily working towards it to help build my next body of work. Um, so yeah, it definitely had a huge impact. Um, and all that work will then carry on to our exhibition in December. Yeah, yeah so you, uh, one of the things is that with all the artists that were participating, um, they're at all at different levels. They